My next guest here to share his macro outlook on what we can expect. He says the hard part is over. Joining me now, Post 9, Goldman Sachs' chief economist, Jan Hatzius. Welcome back. It's nice to see you on Closing Bell. Great to be with you, Scott. Uh, I read your outlook here, and you sound pretty, dare I say, optimistic? I'm pretty optimistic, and in part because we have seen such a strong, such strong signs that the, we can bring down inflation to an acceptable level without really hurting the economy. I mean, 2023 has been sort of a proof of concept of that. We've seen very substantial disinflation across not just the U.S. and the developed economies, but a much broader group of countries that saw a, an unwanted and large acceleration in inflation uh, to an average of about 6% in 2022. It's back to 3%. There's still some work to do, but we're on a very good path. The you know, you use interesting words in, in your outlook. Um, you see tailwinds to global growth. So whereas, you know, others would be a little more worried about where the economy is going to be in 24, you use words like tailwinds. W what are the tailwinds that you see? The most important tailwind is strength in real disposable household income growth. And that is really driven by inflation coming down very substantially, mm -hmm. wage growth also coming down, but coming down more slowly. So real wages are now growing, employment is still growing, and that is helping consumers. I would say that's number one. The, the other one that I think is important, the other question, mm -hmm. whether monetary policy is going to have a large lag negative impact on growth. We think the biggest negative impact is already behind us. Interesting, so the, the labor market never falls apart. It slows, which, you know, last month obviously was a positive read. It was one of the things that the bulls needed to see. So we, we continue on this steady but not stumbling path. That's right. The labor market held up well in 2023. You take the average unemployment rate globally. It's been going sideways at a very low level. And I would expect more of the same in 2024. Okay, what I see here too in terms of returns, I'm quoting now from your outlook. We expect returns in rates, credit, equities, and commodities to exceed cash in 2024. And that's your baseline forecast, explain. That's right, in, in some cases only by a little bit for rates at the long end and the short end, we, we, we don't expect big differences, but we do expect a pickup in returns and credit. We expect a somewhat bigger pickup in, uh, in equities. And then we're looking for commodity prices to recover and to actually produce pretty strong returns in 2024. It also sounds, I suppose, if you, if you have this belief that the Fed returns to being our friend, so to speak, rather than our foe. Not only are they done hiking, but you know, if necessary, they'll cut. And if necessary, they'll cut more than, you know, we, we might otherwise think. Yeah, we're, our baseline expectation is the Fed does nothing for the next year, but... Oh, nothing. So you, you, don't, you don't have any cuts? We don't have any cuts in our baseline forecast because we have a pretty constructive forecast on growth. Well, what about, um, but, you, but you also are constructive on inflation coming down back, back towards 2%. So wouldn't they cut e even if inflation comes down? We have, it, we have inflation still a little above 2%. So that's consistent, I think, with a cut towards the end of next year. However, if things were to be weaker in 2024, if we saw an unanticipated you know, um, speed bump or, or, or maybe pothole in, uh, in growth, they could cut in response to weaker numbers because inflation is now in a place that would allow them to cut.